All right. Hey, everybody. So this is going to be not quick, uh, but efficient walkthrough of the uh, global signals, local signals, uh, awaiting global signals, awaiting local signals, and awaiting functions. So five different ways to use Godot signals. And I did a, I did a demo video about a year ago for just global signals. People, there's a few people, not a lot, <laughs> that liked it. Um, and since then, I've actually worked on a bunch of projects that utilize all these different types of uh, signaling and awaiting. And I was like, wow, there's just so much more power here that I wasn't aware of a year ago. And I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, by no means professional Godot developer, got a few years experience under my belt. Um, definitely not a professional vlogger or tutorial giver, so this is going to be rough. You might hear dogs in the background. My wife, she's out there chatting away. So, you know, no apologies, actually. So <laughs> just from one dev to another, uh, you get what you pay for. All right. So, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to briefly go over global signals and local signals. You know, very those are pretty simple. A lot of you may already have experience with those pretty familiar the way I set things up may be interesting maybe um, so probably about somewhere five plus minutes in I'm gonna jump into a waiting for globals a waiting for locals and functions so uh, you might want to skip ahead if you're pretty familiar with the previous project or even those two things globals and uh, locals so what we're gonna do is we're gonna piggyback on the project I did before you can find it, Godot Global Signals, if you want to follow through up there, go ahead and do that. Um, otherwise, you can just, you can kind of follow along with one, yeah, you, you will be able to follow along with this video as well. Um, this project, I start from scratch though, so if that interests you, uh, maybe start there. It is a 3.5 project. This is gonna be a 4.1.1 project, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we are gonna upgrade. We're gonna get the source for this, which you can find here on the video. There's a link to the project. Uh, and so this project ends here with us emitting a global signal, which these four units pick up and they spin. And then these four units make a callback, a global signal callback to the main uh, script and then uh, displays their ID. So that's what that project does. All right, so let's jump into it here. I'm going to be using Godot Valet uh, to launch the project. If you don't know what it is, it is... Oh, should be showing my back or my desktop. It's revealing. Okay, so um, Godot Valet, it's just a simple project manager, although it has itch.io integration, so you can click a button and have like three different platforms all published at once, packaged, zipped, and published all automatically. So it's nice. It's a project I worked on uh, within the last year or so. So it's up on itch.io and it's open source, free, yada, yada, yada. Um, that is what we're working with here. So, um, before we before we open the code, so this is the code, and I think I downloaded it. Did I download it? I don't think I downloaded it. So let's make sure. I, yeah, it's cranking. Okay, so I should have it. So, um, one of the things, what, what the project that I learned all of this on and I don't think my sound is up so that's good is this idle heroes like battle system that I developed somebody it's so loud on my I'm gonna mute can I mute so um, somebody was saying hey I can't find a tutorial on the idle heroes like um, battle system can somebody do create one or provide one and I'm like hey it's probably easy I can do it so set out to do it lo and behold it is not easy it was really difficult I was challenged with it uh, and it was because I went into it without being aware of the weights and awaiting for globals and awaiting for locals and awaiting for functions. I, I just didn't know what uh, I didn't await anything. So I was sitting there trying to create these really complex state machines and I was trying to manage all the timers for all my animations and, you know, okay, this animation takes 0 0.4 seconds. So put a, a sleep or a wait here, you know, uh, a get tree, whatever, and, and await a timer await. And then just just this mess right and I, I have a feeling there's quite a few people out there especially if you were coming from 2x 3x that that's the way you did things um, and that's just the absolute wrong way to go about it and I had to learn the hard way which was start this whole project have tons of trouble with it 
went and got some code reviews with some friends and said, hey, what do you think? Where should I be looking? And they said, you should be looking at uh, asynchronous programming, basically. Like, you should be awaiting for things. I'm like, oh, okay. So dove into it and um, dove into it and um, came up with this, which is really clean. And it works 100% of the time, which is I can send a unit across the screen. I can wait for that. I can then have a downward uh, striking animation, wait for that. I can then bring in the animation back, wait for that, and then return to my original point, and then hand over control back to the battle manager. And it's super clean and it's fail safe. Um, none of your units are gonna ever get out of whack. Even if you even if, even if you change an animation, you let's say you take your swords, your sword sweep, your downward strike, whatever, and you go from 0 0.4 seconds to seven, let's say seven seconds for some crazy reason, it's not a problem. The, the, the way I'm gonna show you how to set up your code is just gonna handle it. And you don't even have to change anything. You don't have to change your timers, nothing. You just wait. And once it's done, you get a signal back that says go ahead and proceed. So super powerful. Everybody should know how to do this. So hopefully this is you and, and we'll get some value out of this. Okay, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be mimicking this. When I'm not gonna be using these assets or anything. We're gonna mimic this with some basic uh, Godot icon. So sorry about that, but it's not gonna be as sexy. Okay, so let's jump into the project here. This is a 3.5 project, so we're gonna get some experience upgrading, see how that goes. Should be pretty easy though. So we'll just run the project, see what errors we get. Yep, so first thing is in Godot 4, they changed the syntax for connections. Instead of using strings, now directly calling the function here, or callable, it's a fun name. Um, so we have this one, and then <clears throat> let me run this. I think there's one more. Yeah. All right. Oh, I hate this dialogue. If you know how to get rid of this dialogue, I will love you forever. I mean that. Okay. All right. So it's running, we hit spin. Okay, so this is global signal to all these units. All these units get the signal, they go spin, and when we're done spinning, we call back to the main script and it prints out the IDs of each one that called it. So great, 100% working, easiest upgrade ever. Um, now let's do, um, I have notes, I wanna make sure I don't skip anything. We are going to be looking at um, globals. So what we want to do is discuss the scene tree here just really quick. So I have a main scene. Let's take a look. It has a spin button on it. It has four units. They're all instantiated. So let's take a look at those units. So we have a node 2D, it has a sprite, and then it has an animation player which points at the sprite and it spins the sprite. I don't use animation players anymore. Um, and if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm looking at myself like a fool instead of looking at you guys up there. Hi. Um, so, um, so I don't use animation players anymore. I use tweens uh, for spinning, for fading, for bouncing, for you know whatever else, button clicks and stuff. Um, so much more powerful and clean. Um, do it. Okay. So let's see. That's our unit. So that's here, we have the unit folder, it has those two files, and then we have our singletons. And this is where I define all my global signals. It's just a generic script. And then in order to get my global signals to work, I have to go into project, pro project settings, auto load, and here's where I define my globals. This tells basically Godot, hey, I want you to load up these scripts into the global space, first thing when the project loads. And so let's just run through that really quick. I'm gonna find my, my signals script, select it, give it a name, signals2, add it, and um, now I've got a signals2 global script that I can reference. So anywhere in my code I can call signals2, and this is perfectly valid to be able to reference the same script twice. It'll just basically load that script into memory twice and then give you unique access to both. Pretty sure, I haven't tested like changing a variable to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna load both of those as unique globals. So it's just basically two instances with different names. And um, 
you're not going to normally do that. Uh, I, maybe you do. Maybe there's a good reason. Um, you can sort your global signals or your globals, I should say, your global scripts. Um, and that can be useful if you like want to um, instantiate a debug script that has a bunch of debugging stuff in it that all your other all your other global scripts are going to reference and you want that to happen first. So that might be a use case. Uh, but anyway, this is where you define globals. Okay. And so if we look at main and we walk through this again, where's main? We click the button. We click the button right here and we have an event associated with it right over here on the right, right there under this node. So on click, we're going to emit a global signals and you can tell it's global because I'm, ref I'm referring to my global signals class. I'm saying emit a signal based on this class and we're going to call spin unit. So that's going to send spin units out to the world. And now anybody who is listening, so can, you can connect is listen basically. So when I, when I set up a connect, I'm always like, okay, we, who's listening? I'm listening. I'm listening for this signal. And this is what I'm going to do when I get that signal. Let's call this function. So this function can be anything. It can be spin units ASDF. That works fine. I just keep them the same because I like, like I said, to find my, my, um, my signals a little bit easier. So, so there we go. So the unit class is sitting here listening. If it gets that signal, it's going to call spin unit, which is going to um, tell our animation player to play the spin. So that's going to start. And then when it's done, the unit has an animation player that also has an event here. See, this is inspector. Then we have go to the node tab. We create an event here or signal, I guess I, I call it an event, but it's a signal. And so this signal is going to get called when the animation finishes and it's going to use the global signals class to emit a done spinning signal. And we're going to pass in an instance of ourself to whoever's listening, which could be any other class, any other node, whatever in the game could be listening for this. Um, if we go back to main, we can see that main is listening for a done spinning signal. When it gets it, it calls the done spinning function. The done spinning function takes in a an argument of some kind. This could be anything, a string, an int, an object. And in this case, we're taking in unit. And I can, if I wanted to do this, I can do that as long as I go back here and make sure that the unit class is defined as unit <clears throat> there we go that way I can't accidentally call this with something else and uh, this is gonna fail so and when it does that it prints out string unit so that is that is a global work a, a global signals workflow so we're calling down to a bunch of units and those units are calling back to us and each one is making this call so I'll, we'll get four of these calls back into main for each of those units <clears throat> okay so the next thing, uh, somebody had a question on the last video of, well, how do you pass variables along? And um, I thought the question, I felt like they were trying to ask something and I didn't understand exactly, but it's easy. Uh, you can see that we're doing it here. We're passing self as a variable. Um, you can, you don't need self. <clears throat> you can pass in, uh, I'm losing my voice, good job. <clears throat> hmm. Ah, some cold coffee. That'll get things going. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we can pass in a number, and again, we can pass in some variable. If we had a global variable, we could pass that. We could pass whatever. And then on whoever's listening absolutely needs to um, be able to handle all of that right here. So I can do A to B variables, right? So this would be A... B and C probably give the better names, uh, but that's it. And so you don't need to like specify anything in your connection. Um, and yeah, so super simple. Uh, and hopefully I've explained that all right. Okay, so where does that leave us? So that's that is global signals. That's passing in globals. Now local signal is super easy. So we're just going to define a signal locally. And we'll call it uh, done spinning, I think. Okay. Uh, when defining a local signal, 
we need to connect to that signal locally. We need to listen for it locally. And um, and the one difference for uh, local um, function calls is that you can't use the same name, and I'll show you why. So let's. I need I need this because we need to trigger the spinning of the units. The units are going to spin right here. When they're done, instead of calling the global signal, we're going to call a local signal. So I'm just removing my global class from this, my global script from it. Okay, so now it's going to emit locally. So even if any other class in my project defines a local signal done spinning or a global signal done spinning, it's not going to be called. So this local emission is going to stay local to the script itself. And it does have some really good uses, um, so which we're going to get into. So we're just going to, I don't, I'm not going to emit myself to myself because I already have that in context, right? So we're going to add a function done spinning and we're going to print done spinning here. And this is due locally so we can make sure that we're seeing the difference. Um, okay. So, so, so this is the problem. So with globals, I like using the same name. I have there's no conflicts, but when you use local signals, you suddenly end up getting a conflict because uh, Godot basically doesn't want you defining a function when you have a signal with the same name because this probably ends up just being a function call underneath the, the underneath the covers. So. It has to be unique. And so what I do is for all of these, I just use on right here. So when this signal gets called done spinning, we're going to call the on done spinning function. All right. So that's a that's a local signal, super easy. And um, I think we'll hit play. OK, we need to get rid of this. Play. Let's do done spinning. Now let's just get rid of it. I don't need it. So I won't be sharing the code from this because we're going to just be editing and deleting and editing and deleting. So uh, if you want to get a start, use the other pro the source from the other project and then build on it this way. Um, OK, so we need the button. We don't need ready. I'll leave it there, though. That's fine. And I think we're good to go. So let's let's walk through it. Walking through and voicing how things are going to work is a really great exercise for learning and retaining some of it. So uh, we're in the main scene right here. When we click uh, the spin unit, we are going to hit the button pressed event. It's going to call spin units, the signal spin units. And whoever is listening to spin units, which our unit is right here, is going to call this function. And this is going to start our animation. When the animation finishes, we are going to hit the uh, animation finished signal, which is going to emit a local signal done spinning. I mean, I could just put this here, but then what fun is that? Um, and we'll and we'll get into why this has value. Um, uh, this scenario doesn't have so much value, but our later one will. So we're going to emit a local signal done spinning and it's gonna uh, hit our local connection our local listener and it's gonna call undone spinning and we're gonna print so there we go so I feel pretty good that it's just gonna work and no errors spin no errors and done no errors so done spinning locally so all four of these finished up their animations and lo and emitted the local signal so there you go that's globals that's locals. Now let's get into the goods. All right, so where are we at on time? 19 minutes already? Man. Okay, so um, so that way I can tell everybody who didn't watch from the beginning to go to the, uh, the good stuff, the awaits. So um, we are going to, we're going to await a global signal first, and it's not going to be as useful until we integrate it with the um, object oriented signal so let's do for a global signal for an await global signal we are going to do something like this await spin units no await for units done spinning and I need my global 
script first. So we're going to add this to, oops, that's it. And so we are going to wait for units done spinning. We need to spin our units first. Then we're going to wait, and then we're going to print something. And so uh, done spinning. So what the expectation here is we're going to kick this off. And while that's starting, we're going to hit this next line almost immediately because we don't wait for signals. Um, so this await is going to just stop here until this global signal gets fired. And it will stay here. And if that signal never gets fired, this will never move on. It'll just sit here. Is that a problem? No, not really. It just means that this particular call is going to be sitting stuck forever. Um, we don't want that. So we're going to make sure that this global signal gets called. And when it's done, then it will move on to the next line. So regardless of how long this takes, and that's what makes it so powerful, these awaits, is that you can pass over control to some unit that goes off and does an hour-long drive around the mountains and then comes back, says, okay, I'm done, and then this will move on. So uh, super powerful. So let's, let's get this signal hooked up. And, er, um, oh, so let's... Uh, Keep in mind, you notice that I don't have to set up a listener for this. This is the listener right here. So I don't have to have signals.connect uh, units done spinning or anything up here. So that's, that's nice. Very nice. Okay, so what we need to have happen is when the, when the animation is finished, we are going to signals, emit signal. What is it there? Do I have it? I do. Do I have it? This one. We are going to emit the signal, which means we need to listen for the spin units. We don't need the local signal anymore. Get rid of that. There we go. Uh, and really fast walkthrough. We already talked about this. We're going to be waiting for this to be done. That uh, spin units come in. We're going to hit the animation player finished event. When this is done, it's going to emit a global signal. Units done spinning. It doesn't care after that. Comes back to here. This actually goes, yep, there was a signal, I'm done waiting, now I can print. So what we're gonna be looking for here is we're gonna click the button, these things are gonna spin. When all of it's done, we're gonna get how many? This is the question. How many of these print done spinnings are we gonna get? Are we gonna get four or are we gonna get less? Not a trick question, I'm setting it up. We're only gonna get one. And the reason for that is because what's happening here I don't know which way I should show it, but so all four of these are going to trigger this this global signal units done spinning. However, this main thread, there's only one of them. It is going to move on when it gets the first global signal. When this units done spinning, the first one comes through, it's going to move on. And now there's nothing else in the project listening for units done spinning. So that means we should only get one done spinning. Uh, in our output here. Ready? Yeah, just the one. Okay, so so this this wouldn't be considered a really great use case. Like you wouldn't normally emit a signal and then have all of these guys call the same signal when they're done because it's really what do you how do you deal with that right? Do you have to check each one to see? what its status is. So so we're going to get into how to do the set this up properly to listen to units and to individual units here in the next few steps. So so let's see. What okay, there's actually let's do the fifth thing here because we have the project is nice and simple. Let's do this. Let's go await uh, um Okay, we're gonna wait a function. So we're gonna wait for units done spinning. So function, units done spinning. And in here, we're gonna do await signals dot, uh, units done spinning. Let's, go, let's not make this as confusing. Uh, we'll call this part two and we're going to await part two. So now what we're doing is we're awaiting a function. So what this is going to do 
is it's going to emit a spin unit signal. It's going to spin the units. I'm looking up there. It's going to spin the units. Those units are all four of them are going to emit a signal that this function is sitting here waiting for. Right? So we, we start the spin. We immediately go, hey, I want you to wait for part two. So we're going to freeze right here in this function. We go to part two and we go, okay, we're going to freeze and wait for somebody to emit this global signal. Units done spinning. And so here we sit. All those units are going to finish spinning. We're going to get the global signal. That global signal, the first one of the four, are going to come in and we're going to go, yep, that's all I needed. And that means we're going to exit part two. We're going to come back to here. We're done waiting and we're going to print done spinning. So this is a good example of awaiting a function that can do a bunch of stuff, including awaiting for other things. Very powerful. Very powerful. And we're going to spin, and then did I go early? That didn't go early. I just missed it. Let's try that again. Spin. <gasps> Done spinning. What happened? Await part two. Wait, do I is this do I need to do that? Spin. Okay, spinning. Done spinning. Ooh. That's a fun one. I think this doesn't give you a compile time error. It uh what is it what is it thinking? Oh it did it did give a warning. I just didn't notice it. And it's actually not the warning in the debugger, so it's not a compile time warning, it's uh Redundant await. Await keyword not needed in this case because the expression isn't a coroutine nor a signal. Yeah. Okay. So it did give us a warning, and that is dummy. Make sure you're calling an actual function. Okay. So that's really cool. It could be used in a lot of cool ways, and I think we're going to dive into all of that, put it all together, and show how we can animate, like that demo I showed you, how we can animate a bunch of animation calls and um, let's use a battle system to do that okay so all right here we go so what we're going to do is we're going to create a battle system here in main let's get a unit container going so i can loop through all my units bam, bam. okay uh, now we're going to also use access as unique name and if you didn't know about this you're going to love me after this um, it's one of the greatest features ever in 4.1, 4x. Um, so now, uh, on button press, let's um, start battle system. Okay. Function. And this is going to be for unit in, let's get this part, unit container dot get children. Okay, so very similar to the dollar sign where you can reference a node, but in this case, I can move this this node around, and as long as it's a access by unique name, I don't have to change this at all. I don't have to update the path. It's huge, right? Normally you're like constantly updating your paths and changing your paths all the time, so no more. Um, I don't even declare variables anymore, like on ready var, whatever node, and then the whole path, don't do it. I just directly access my nodes here now. Um, in some cases, I may use that, but for the most part, I'm, I'm switching over to this sort of access. So, um, game changer for sure. Okay, uh, let's continue on here for unit in unit container. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to, we want to attack, and we are going to await for the unit attack. And so that means, let's see. some stuff. I don't know if I need signals. I can keep my ready class. Okay. Uh, what else do I need? I'm winging this a little bit, so bear with me. Okay, function, start battles. No, I wanted to attack. Attack. And what I want to do here is demonstrate like the fact that the unit's going to take over from the battle system and do a bunch of stuff with all these different animations and then come back. We're going to spoof the animations, though, to simplify things. So what do we need to do? We need to let's follow our demo. We're going to dash, and then we're going to await 
what do we need? Wait, uh, animation uh, completed. Okay, because we're going to reuse a local signal for this stuff. And we'll get into that. Let's see, let's do dash first. Function dash. Uh, let me grab a tween. I have a tween here somewhere. Don't I? I think I do. Dash tween. Forgive me, I can't ever remember the syntax of tweens. It's like my brain refuses. Okay, uh, I'm not ready for you. So we're going to create a new tweens, 4.x tweens. Uh, we're going to set the property of rotation. And what do I need to do here? 360, and let's take one second so we can see it. And then we're going to use as relative. This is really cool. So that means I want you to rotate from wherever you're currently rotated. Very nice. This is something you can't really do easily or at all, maybe with animation player. Um, you probably can, but it probably takes a lot of work. So this is awesome. Okay. So when you are done, you are going to call tween callback. And I need to tell you, uh, we're going to call. Um, I think on animation completed, that should work. Okay, and you are going to init signal. Now, if there's an easy way to do this, a shortcut to doing this, let me know in the comments below. I've always wanted to say that. Um, okay, emit signal. Which one are we emitting? We're emitting um, animation completed. Okay, so let's set up our local signal here. Okay, click your phone, and I need to connect to it locally. There we go. There we, uh, and I need to use on here because it's local. I don't need to, I choose to. And I don't need to do anything with it. This is, uh, I'm gonna mark this used uh, for callback. So I know that why I have an empty function sitting here because um, I have to have it for the local connection, but I don't need it because all I need is for somebody who's listening to it to hear it. Can you do that? Can I, can I do this? <gasps> Are we going to uncover something together? No. Too few arguments. You have to have two. Okay. I tried. Point being, you have to you have to call into a local function even though you're not going to use it. So maybe that's a feature request, good old people. Hey, um, let's see. What's your problem? On animation completed. On any oh, because I have two here, so I can't call this on animation completed. Okay, completed animation. <laughs> All right, this is silly. I feel like I could have a better naming, so it's not as confusing as this. But this is going to work. So when this when this tween is done, we're going to call completed animation. This is going to emit a local signal called animation completed, which is going to um, be picked up here locally in this script, which is going to do nothing. But this await was listening for it, and will now move on. So. Great. So what we're going to do is we are going to dash. We're going to uh, what? We're going to swing down like another animation, right? And then we're going to wait. And then we're going to, uh, let's, let's do something more official. Perform lunging strike. Okay. And then uh reset weapon okay and we need our await because this is an animation and then is that rest reset weapon and then uh return to uh what do you want to call it return to position return to starting position how's that okay now we're going to do our goal here is to simulate a bunch of different animation steps that our unit is going to take give you a good idea of 
how this can all work together. Okay. So we're going to pretend these are all different things. The unit's dashing across the screen. The unit's going to swing down. And then after that, it's going to reset the weapon back up, let's say. And then it's going to dash back to its starting position. That's what we're trying to simulate here. Each one of those steps we're waiting for. And when we're done right here, it will return to the battle system. And the battle system will say, oh, okay, I'm done. This unit is done with their attack. I can now move on to the next unit. So let's see. We can add a print battle round completed. Okay. And so every time I push the button, we will do a round. So start battle round is actually what this could be doing. Don't need to perfect it. Okay, signals, units done spinning. Do I need that one? I don't think I need that one anymore. Oh, I do. Who's listening for that? Nobody is listening for that. So, those, we're not going to spin the units anymore. So, if we do that, we're not going to be using this guy anymore, right? Yeah. So we can just delete these two things. And I can delete my animation player. I don't need that. Okay. Spin units not declared in scope. No longer need to listen for that signal. And good, good. All cleaned up. Okay. Let's run through it really fast. So on button press, we are going to start the battle round in here. We are going to loop through all the units in our container right here. For each one of those, we are going to wait for its performance attack. Get in here, attack. It's going to perform dash, which is going to be a tween. And keep in mind, tweens, um, without this callback, tweens immediately execute, even though the, the animation may sit there spin. The function completely finishes and returns while your tween is still going. So if you want to wait for your tween to end, you have to add a callback. So, uh, and again, if anybody has an improvement to how to shortcut that, um, such as tween.wait, that would be kind of cool. But we don't have that. So um, we have tween callback. So when it's done, it's going to call this generic local signal or local function completed animation. It, in turn, is going to call a local signal. This local signal is going to get picked up, and it's going to call this function on animation completed, which does nothing. But at the same time that signal gets sent, and this does nothing, this one goes, oh, I got my signal. I'm done. I can move on to the next. And we're going to repeat the steps. So the unit does all their stuff, and then we're going to return, when all these animations are done, to main. And then the next unit, this is going to be done. So we're going to continue and loop through the next unit. We're going to repeat all that. And once all that's done, we are going to call round completed. And we're going to test by clicking the button again. So here we go. Let's see. Any errors? No errors. Spin units. OK. Oh, they're all spinning in the same direction. I may not have updated my script to use negative turning. Let's fix that so we can see the different animations. I think I needed to do this, 360, and then minus 360. So we go both directions. All right, so we're going to try it again. So we're going to spin. Yep, there we go. We're going back and forth. So each animation is getting its turn. It's done. It goes on to the next unit. Yeah, no errors. There we go. Bounce, bounce, and then I'm not going to wait for the whole thing, but we're going to see, can I do it again? No problems. Yes. So there you go. So very cool use of a weight. Now, did I use object signal? Did I? I have not used that yet. So let's make sure we use that before we're done. Oh, I did. I did. We, we, yeah, we're waiting for unit attack. But you can also await for unit dot um, attack completed. So this is going to wait for a local signal of this unit to complete its attack. So this is really cool. I've 
I can't believe I almost missed it. So we do the attack, right? Making that call, bouncing here. No. We want this. We want this. And then, and then we want to do await unit. So it's the same thing in a way, uh, but with different use cases, you can, this makes more sense, I guess. Uh, await attack completed. So this is just, I guess, more flexibility with signals. So we're going to actually await a signal. So this would get called and, um, and will it return? Because we're not awaiting here, this is going to return immediately the first moment it runs into this await because it itself is not waiting for that to finish. So we're going to verify that. So if this gets called, this attack is going to run. It's going to start its first spin clockwise, I think, and then it's going to sit here and wait. But this, we should end up waiting right. We should move right to this while we're seeing the animation go back and forth for that first attack. We should end up hitting this breakpoint while that's happening. So let's try it. But we need to set up our signal. So let's finish that. So this is a not a global signal, but a local signal in here. And we're going to set it up. OK. And do we need to connect to it to emit it? I don't know. Let's try without actually creating connection. So we're going to do all these things. And down here, we it's a local signal. So we're going to emit signal. I can remember the syntax. There we go. String. There we go. And so I'm emitting this local signal. Now, this unit doesn't care about this signal, so it's not listening. We don't need to define a connect, but we do need to define that it's a local signal. So even though we're not listening, this main class is listening for it. I love this. Okay, so let's, let's test it. My, now, my theory is we're, the units are going to spin. It's not theory, it should be practice, I guess. <laughs> uh, the units are going to spin, and while they're spinning, we're going to hit this await here. And we're going to stay here until we get an attack completed. Now, this is a little bit sketchy, depending on what your battle system doing is everything. Um, because um, if you have lots of units that are sending signals, you would have to guarantee that only one of them would ever send this attack completed at a time, right? Uh, so this works fine because we're processing each unit one at a time. Uh, okay, so all right, so we're gonna okay. Let's just test this. Okay, so again, expecting to hit that await before the the first unit is done animating. Yeah, just immediately. Okay, and again, that's because we didn't add an await here. If I add an await here, then this line of code. Is going oops this line of code is going to respect the other awaits is basically how that works because I'm not adding an await here it says well I don't care about the other awaits that you have in here I'm just going to return immediately as soon as I hit that first await I'm bouncing out and I'm coming right back here and continuing on okay and so let's run this now once more, so it should work exactly the same, which is we spin the unit. Yep, we're spinning. We haven't got it yet. When it's done, we should the local signal should get fired. It didn't. Why didn't it? What happened? Interesting. Uh, what did I miss? So, okay, unit attack. We do all these things for that unit. It finishes. Hmm. Emit signal attack completed. It may require that connection. 
because if nothing is listening for it, then we don't pick up the fact that it was called. We're going to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Uh, and now I'm going to need... Ooh. No, you got to test. You got to play around. That's how you learn. Okay, let's do this. Use for callback. And let's try it again. This thing and drum roll. <gasps> what happened? Why aren't we seeing it? What are we expecting? Do you see it? So uh, we're attacking. We're going to wait for this unit attack completed signal. It is a local signal, which we've defined. Attack completed. We have it connected, whether we need to or not. We are emitting that signal locally, attack completed. No errors, right? Nope. Emit signal. This absolutely should be working. What is this happening? Oh, this is when you you want editing, don't you? Um, we're waiting for this signal. I don't need to define it here. It's a local signal. Oh, wait. Wait, what am I expecting though when it's done? Oh, der. Okay. <laughs> It'd be helpful if I added the print statement that we're waiting for. Uh, der. <laughs> okay. Uh, always entertaining when it's the most simplest thing possible. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit the break point here, I guess. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we are we immediately hit this, but we're gonna wait. And wait for the animation, and then I'm gonna print the truth. Dummy, right there. And it goes immediately to the next one, because we print out and then we loop around, start the attack, and so we should see this work normally with all of the output. Yeah, so two different ways to wait. You can wait for the function call itself, or you can wait for a signal. It depends on your scenarios, but both are perfectly acceptable. And I think that's it. That is that is five different ways to use Godot signals. Uh, and you should absolutely be using them and switch over to using them. If you're not using them, refactor. If you're not, you will, you will save so much time and headache. If we come back and look at this, just look at how simple this is to debug. And um, one other point here is at any time, I can come in and add a compl I can add five more animations. Let me see if I can get copy paste working like the way I want it to. I can do this, right? And let's just test it, right? Can I can I prove this that I can just blow in a bunch of new animations and change all the timing and everything on those? And wait, what? It just works? Yeah. And the simplicity of debugging this versus um, you know what we were doing before in 3x and prior dollar or manual way it's just insane such a huge difference um, this is for me personally not you know I, I speak generally and vaguely but it's always about me uh, from my experiences is that this was a huge game changer for me it, it made my projects from nearly impossible to get done to oh I, I can release all the time now because my code isn't such a mess. Um, and this is just one of the biggest changes um, that I've made that really helped things out. Um, it's been trying to convey it in words how massive it's been for me. So anyway, hope you find value in it. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, best of luck to you out there. Cheers. Bye.